Hello and welcome to my channel. Have you, like me, wondered why so many people are getting COVID despite being fully vaccinated? The CDC reports that since COVID vaccinations began, almost 32,000 individuals in the United States who were fully vaccinated, who were supposedly protected against severe disease and death, have been hospitalized or died from breakthrough COVID infections. Of that group, over 7,000 have died and 85% of those were aged 65 or older. 57% of those dying were males. What's going on here? Is there something wrong with the vaccines or something else? Does it mean that we should give up on the current Pfizer and Moderna vaccines? Let me say here, no, we don't. The mRNA vaccines and others appear to provide a good bit of protection against hospitalization and death in all age groups, just not as much as we would like, especially in the elderly. Let's look at why. I've discussed in previous videos the apparent disconnect between vaccination levels and rate of COVID cases. In the United States, the waves of COVID infection appear similar in states with the highest vaccination rates like Vermont and Connecticut compared to Wyoming and Idaho who have the lowest rates. On a global level, the UK and Israel who have very high rates of vaccination continue to have high numbers of COVID cases, just like other countries with low vaccination rates. So there must be other factors. These factors could be the different vaccines that are given, percent obesity in the population, average age of the population, population density, levels of social distancing, masking, and societal lockdown. But there are likely others. But what is it about those 65 and older that puts them at such high risk, even with vaccination? Well, one possibility is comorbidities. Many have heard that former Secretary of State Colin Powell died this week from COVID, but in his situation, considering that he had an underlying blood malignancy, it wasn't simply his age and COVID that led to his death. In fact, we have known for a long time that people with this type of cancer don't respond as well to vaccination, and apart from cancers and other immunocompromised conditions, it appears that the elderly, even vaccinated elderly, are at higher risk of severe COVID deaths than many unvaccinated young people. So is this a problem with the messenger RNA vaccines? From what I can read, I don't believe so, since countries that use other types of vaccines are seeing the same breakthrough infections. Experts in immunology believe that it's a problem of aging, in this case, aging immune systems. I have covered this in my video on immunity, but I'll quickly review. Our bodies deal with infections or invaders two ways. First is the innate immune system, which is the nonspecific protection we have against any invader. Certain tissues or cells protect against or attack and destroy whatever they perceive as foreign. That happens quickly and is nonspecific. Cells that are part of the innate system release inflammatory chemicals like cytokines that help destroy the invaders or sick or damaged cells. The second part is the adaptive immune system. This is the part that is stimulated by infection and the B cells and T cells begin making antibodies against specific parts of invading viruses or bacteria in order to provide a stronger and long-term immunity against future infections. But as we age and are chronically exposed to radiation or toxins or other stressors, our cells are less able to repair and replace these damaged cells and tissues. We can see that in the aging skin, the graying hair, and other changes in our bodies. On a cellular level, some of these aging cells secrete chemicals that damage neighboring healthy cells and trigger inflammation and end up weakening the body and making it harder to fight off infections. In the case of the immune system, two important things appear to happen in COVID. One is the innate immune system over-responds. We see this in the form of a cytokine storm. It is like the inflammatory macrophages are trying to kill them all then the adaptive immune system is underactive, almost as if it just doesn't care. 
So while a 70 or 80 year old may have a healthy enough immune system to handle many types of infection, especially if they have some pre-existing immunity, some are not able to produce the immune response to correctly handle COVID, even after being vaccinated. We see this also with flu vaccines. Even though many elderly get vaccinated for the flu annually, many still die each year and some experts estimate that a third of the elderly do not respond sufficiently to flu vaccines to provide protection. So where do we go from here? Well first, I do agree with experts at the CDC and FDA that boosters should be offered to those over 65. We do not yet know whether or not that third jab after the initial two Pfizer or Moderna will be enough for long-term protection but I believe the third shot is a good idea. Some are asking me if it would be better to use a different vaccine to mix and match vaccines. I think that is what I will choose to do, and the FDA appears to be moving toward approving that. Next, as much as I don't want to say it, as a baby boomer whose parents are in their 80s, I'm encouraging them to continue to be careful about exposure. For anyone in the same situation, I encourage them to protect themselves as much as possible in order not to spread anything to their aging family members. Also, continue to take regular supplements of vitamin C and D and zinc to try and eat healthy and exercise regularly if possible, to communicate with their doctors about what they can or should do if they get infected. I've said from the beginning that there is no one thing that we do or don't do that will get us safely through COVID. It is a series of things that either helps to protect us or leads to bad outcomes. I hope this has clarified this issue a bit for you. If you have some questions for me or other topics you'd like me to cover, please leave them in the comments section and I'll try to answer them. As always, thank you for watching. You help make this channel successful by subscribing, liking, and commenting. Anyway, that's all for now. Thank you and be well.